All right, let me start by reading the question. <laughs> it says, a small ball of some mass, oh, it's already giving me the label, so let me just highlight the label, is tied to some string of some length and set is set rotating, okay, checking grammar, with negligible friction in a vertical circle, okay. At the top of the circle, it is moving at speed, oh, that's a typo, I gotta fix that. I'll do that after the um, after I do this question. Um, but speed of V, um, answer the questions below in terms of M, L, V, okay. So I, I like to draw a picture of what this looks like so that I have a concrete um, physical picture in mind. This is especially important thing to do as you um, as you approach any question using conservation of um, energy and momentum problem-solving strategy because this is the one weakness of conservation law strategy in that it doesn't go through every single detail that's a strength but it's also weakness because um so so you have to fill in that gap and make sure all the picture looks complete before you start writing down equations so I have some ball of some mass that uh, attach it to some string of length L and it's uh, spinning um, in a vertical circle. So ball is moving with some speed here. And okay, it looks like it, uh, yeah, it has different labels for different parts of the circle. So. Um, the V that they gave us, that's for when the ball is at the top here. Wait. Uh, so this would be one of the snapshots that you have to pay attention to. And the speed of V given is uh, for this snapshot. Let me label this snapshot um, up top. Um, answer the questions below. Okay. And it's asking, at the bottom of the circle, how fast is the ball moving? So the question has all the uh, signs of a situation where energy is conserved, negligible friction. And even though the tension force in the string is, um, it's not a conservative force, but the direction of movement is perpendicular to the direction of tension. So it does no work. So, uh, so the only force that's doing any kind of work here is gravity. And gravity is conservative force. So you can use conservation of energy and include the effect of gravity as part of the potential energy. So we are going to use conservation of energy and since we are convinced that total mechanical energy is conserved in this setup, we can uh, say this, that the total mechanical energy in one, so, oh, so this is the place where you have to identify useful snapshots. So the way conservation laws are useful is uh, it lets you take it to two points, two different points in a physical setup and say that some physical quantity at those two points are, diff uh, are the same despite all the interaction and um, processes that's taken place. So I have one snapshot already identified. And since we want the speed at the bottom, the other snapshot that we should use is this one here. Let me label that uh, bot for bottom. So we say total energy at the top is equal to total energy at the bottom. Yeah, very simple. And the rest of the steps are spelling out what um, different parts of the energy is, uh, setting up some algebraic expression and hoping that we have the same number of unknowns as equations and solving for it. So let's go through this here. So uh, breaking out the total energy in terms of the potential energy and kinetic energy, um, I need, so, so I have gravitational potential energy at the top plus the kinetic energy at the top is equal to the gravitational potential energy at the bottom plus the kinetic energy at the bottom. 
And uh, let me set some references to make my problem solving uh, simple. So for this gravitational potential energy at the bottom, we can make that zero if we set our reference for the height. So that at the bottom of the swing, the, we say that's where y equals zero. Then we can say, oh, the gravitational potential energy at that point is zero. Um, it, we do have freedom to set arbitrary reference point for gravitational potential energy, and we are using that freedom to simplify our mathematical expressions. So um, this expression is mgh, and as I'm writing down, let me just note in the geometry, the height here, it looks like looking at this picture, it should be 2L the diameter of the circle or twice the length of the uh, radius um, string. <laughs> so with that, let me just uh, write out the gravitational potential energy at the top is mg times 2L. And the kinetic energy at the top is 1 half mv squared, noting that this v is the exact same v that's noted here. So it's uh, not a generic V. Uh, that's equal to zero gravitational potential energy at the bottom and the kinetic energy at the bottom. And I'm going to write it in terms of this parameter that's given. Uh, one half and V bottom squared. Okay, so looking at this expression, I have one unknown, the speed at the bottom. And I think I know every other quantity or rather, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, mass cancels out, but even if it didn't cancel out, uh, it's one of the, uh, the parameters I could use. So solve this for velocity at the bottom, and we're done. Uh, I'm just going to do that algebra in my head. Um, <laughs> you're welcome to pause and work it out yourself or double check my algebra. So after I'm done doing that algebra in my head, this is what I get. Velocity at the bottom is equal to square root of v squared um, plus 4pl. <laughs> so let me just uh, uh, put this in the answer box. All right, let's keep going. So that's part A. For part B, it's asking, as the ball moves at the speed given above, what is the tension force on the ball? Oh, <laughs> yeah, so this is one of those mixed strategy questions uh, by which I mean it. Um, so we use the conservation of energy strategy for the first part. And the biggest, uh, one of the two biggest reasons we are going for conservation of energy is that it's uh, so much a simpler problem solving strategy. So that's how we would like to approach every single problem if we can. But there will be situations when you do have to fall back on the standard strategy. That's whenever they mention force. <laughs> usually whenever they mention force. Because to find the force, you usually need to use Newton's law problem solving strategy. So we'll just have to do that. Um, so it's asking the string applies attention. T okay, so I I'm looking at this snapshot here and let me just uh, take a little bit of a shortcut and draw my free body diagram just uh, right on top of this uh, figure i normally don't do that because i want to avoid uh, confusing my uh, force labels with other things but um you know i i think i've earned the right to do that after having done <laughs> standard strategy for for a whole month <laughs> so and hopefully um you also uh, feel more comfortable enough with the free body diagrams that when you have other labels in your diagram, you don't confuse them for force. So when this mass is at the bottom here, uh, so there will be gravity pulling it down, mg, and uh, there should be tension force pulling it up, t bottom. And here's an important question to make sure that you address in your head, which is, what is the acceleration of this ball at this point? And if you are answering acceleration equal to zero, then we need to review circular motion. Whenever something is moving in a circle, it doesn't have zero acceleration. 
it'll always have a centripetal acceleration. That's the important thing that you have to acknowledge, remind yourself, realize uh, before you um, before you can do this correctly. So acceleration at this bottom. So it'll be your centripetal acceleration. So it'll be actually even given in terms of other kinematical parameters. It'll be the speed at the bottom. That would be velocity at the bottom squared divided by the radius of the circle or in this case L. So we are going to be using this as we write down our Newton's law strategy um, expressions. So so I've done standard strategy step number one through a free body diagram. Step oh um so I thought about acceleration, but step number two is specifically uh, defining your coordinate axis. So let me define my coordinate axis so that upward is my positive x, um, and it's just one dimensional. I don't have to include the other dimension. Um, Standard stretch. Step number three, breaking down forces into components. No need here. Uh, step number four, I'm going to write down Newton's second law equations. So this is the. So this is step number four of the standard strategy for part B. Um, I have my net force, uh, which will be tension minus the gravity, mg, going in the opposite direction. That's equal to mass times acceleration. And I already wrote out what my acceleration is. So let me just write that down um, to uh, simplify some of those steps. Um, acceleration of the bottom squared over L. OK. Hmm. I think I have one equation, one unknown. So this is my one equation. And tension at the bottom is the only thing I don't know. So, so yeah, I think I can just solve for that. And uh, I'll need to plug in the speed at the bottom um, as, as I'm doing that. So let me just do that. So tension at the bottom of the swing is going to be equal to, um, uh, I still have, let me factor out the mass m. So m times uh, speed at the bottom squared. So it will be this quantity. V squared plus 4GL divided by L. Um, yeah, and then from moving the gravity over, I have I had plus mg vector dot m, so I have plus g. Um, oh, I think I can simplify it a little bit more. I can cancel this L with that L and get um, tension at the bottom is going to be, uh, let me write it this way mv squared over l that takes care of this term and then the rest it will be 4 uh, 4 mg plus mg so plus 5 mg mm. okay um, <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> what more is there so tension at the bottom in this case it's significantly greater than the the tension um Um, yeah, significantly greater than the, the just the weight of the ball. And I think all of that is correct. Yeah, I, I'm just looking at something to make sure I didn't miss anything. I, I don't know. That value just seemed high to me. Maybe after I'm done, I'll just plug in that part B to make sure I'm doing it correctly. Um, okay. Assuming speed at the top is fast enough that the string remains taut, yeah, what is the tension force on the ball? Oh, oh I see. I, I think they want me to answer tension force at the top in terms of the speed at the top. Okay, so so uh, let me do that. I, I thought uh, I I thought the otherwise the answer was too simple. Tension at the top equals zero. Um, but that's uh, at a minimum speed of V. And for this question, they are not asking for minimum speed of V. So, so I have to go through the same steps that I went through for part B. Um, so taking this picture here at the top, I need to draw my free body diagram. So let me just uh, draw free body diagram here. Um, I have, uh, I always have gravity. So there will be gravity mg. And this time tension can only pull. So tension will be downward, not upward. And all this is fine because I remember from <laughs> my circular motion stuff 
that acceleration here is not zero. It's a centripetal. It's a pointing downward, and it's a pointing downward with the magnitude um, v squared, speed at the top squared, divided by l. So let me um, just uh, uh, write that out, copy and paste it here, and we'll work out the remainder of standard strategy here. So I've done standard strategy step number one, uh, free body diagram, and I thought about acceleration and my uh, defining my axis. Let's define this as my plus x axis. Um, no forces to break down into components. Everything is already pointing in plus x direction. Now I can write down my Newton's second law equation. Net force is equal to tension at the top plus mg this time because they are pointing in the same direction is equal to mass times acceleration, the centri centripetal acceleration, v squared over l. So well, I can solve this for tension. Tension is equal to um, mv squared over l minus mg. I think I'm done. Um, that is in terms of all the parameters that I'm allowed to use. Okay, so that's that's our answer <laughs> to the tension force at the top. Um, yeah, the difference between them is how much tension in the string exists. Yeah, and it does say it's more than by 2 mg. So it is by 6 mg and let's hope that uh, <laughs> it's actually correct. Uh, so uh, let me go to the question page and just enter this mv squared over L plus 5 mg to convince myself that it is correct. And I think it is right because it does speed up as it swings down. And that's what the... Um, <laughs> the last question part there is getting it. So mv squared L over plus 5mg. Uh, mv squared over L plus 5mg. Yep, good. <laughs> okay, so that's the question. Wow, that took a while. Um, it's a multi-step question. It, um, it does take a while.